Hello and welcome to another episode of Rico GR101, episode 14, Snap Distance Priority. Uh, snap Distance Priority is um, an attempt by Rico to invent a new priority mode for a digital camera. Um, you've heard of aperture priority, shutter speed priority, and you've got your manual mode and program mode. Uh, the Ricoh camera lineup, the GRs, have pretty much always had um, snap focal shooting. So you're able to set a distance and uh, just bang the shutter button down or uh, do something else. The back screen on the GR3 and the GR3X are touch, uh, touch screens, so you can also then um, uh, set those to um, snap straight away. And you can set your main focal, uh, your focusing mode to to snap. So the cameras have always been able to do this. You set um, uh, a snap focus distance, say two meters, and uh, then change your aperture to something like f6.3, perhaps, or f7, or 7.1, or f8. Then you're going to have uh, a certain zone. And this is your your depth of field zone. So something at exactly the snap distance will be tack sharp if you uh, take a picture of something. But then you will have this acceptably sharp uh, depth of field. And that's what the Recode does. It does zone focusing and they call it snap focusing. So in an update, a firmware update, Rico introduced uh, snap distance priority which um, kind of competes with aperture priority and shutter speed priority, or doesn't compete with, but uh, creates an addition to those shooting modes. And so if we go in the menu now and take a look at that, we'll just switch the camera on. So we're going to go in the menu. I'm just going to adjust the screen brightness down there so you can better see it, sharper text. So right now I'm in normal shooting mode. I am in aperture priority. And you don't have to make any adjustments to the dial. Activating uh, snap distance priority is done in the menu. And I believe it is on camera menu, page four, the snap distance priority. So you go over there, you select that, and you just switch it on. Now that makes a couple of changes to the camera. And now we can see here that we have SN down here for our priority mode. So we're in snap distance priority now. Up here, the focusing system has been changed to snap. And then we have these two new uh, pieces of information on the screen here. One is your DOF value. This is your depth of field. And uh, this has uh, depth of field one, two, and three. It's currently on two. And you can see this symbol here, the ring, means that you can change this value by rotating the rear dial. This value here is your snap distance. You're used to seeing that. You, um, I have it on my quick menu as well. But um, this now means that uh, the front dial here will change your snap distance value. So I can just change that by going up to 5 meters, 3.5, 2.5, 2, 1, 1 1.5, etc. So that's how you change those values. Now, depth of field priority 1 is the shallow depth of field. You can see over here we have our distance scale for focusing and the green bar is the depth of field and the yellow bar, the tiny little yellow bar there, that is where we are going to achieve critical uh, tack sharp focus. The green bar is acceptable focus and anything outside the, those uh, areas there will not be in focus at all sometimes with a camera with a small lens like this small sensor small lens remember this is a 28 equivalent and the lens is actually an 18.3 and on the gr3x it's actually a 20 uh, 26.1 millimeter lens um sometimes the difference between acceptably acceptable focus and out of focus isn't that uh big so some people, when they do snap photography with these cameras, they get a little bit disappointed because everything that's supposed to be sharp 
in that um, in that zone, in that depth of field focus zone, is actually just a little bit soft, and that's just the nature of acceptable focus. So uh, that's something you have to live with, and uh, that might change the way you shoot with the camera. To get a deeper depth of field, we go up to depth of field two, for example. This gives us a slightly deeper depth of field here. When I'm on two meters on the GR3, uh, you can see we're getting just about 1.2, 1.3 meters up to five. So that's a depth of field of about three and a half to four meters. And if I go all the way up to uh, depth of field three, there, now you can see it's bumped the uh, aperture up to f8 and my uh, acceptable focus depth of field has gone all the way out to infinity now um, i believe on the ricoh gr3x i don't have one at hand here uh, but i believe on the ricoh gr3x to achieve infinity focus we would have to bump that up to uh, the snap distance up to 3.5 uh, meters and uh, that would give you uh, an f stop value of f10 so the gr3 has got a slight advantage there you can get more light in the camera when you're achieving the same depth of field but then of course the GR3X has the advantage when it's uh, when you're talking about close-up shooting and subject isolation. It just gives you a little bit better subject isolation. But both fantastic cameras, of course. Um, what does it do when you change these two things? Well, one of them is affecting your focus, and the other one is affecting uh, uh, your aperture. And it's kind of doing things in big jumps. So it's not like working with aperture priority where you can go up in small increments through the apertures. This is going up in big jumps. So you can see here, when I go down from uh, depth of field three down to depth of field two, like that, it jumped from five down to 3.2. And uh, if I had my snap focal distance a smaller value say 1.5 meter and i go from depth of field 2 up to depth of field 3 it went from f8 to f11 so you've not got that much control over it but the point of this is that you can walk down the street and um, be nice and stealthy with your rico gr and snap away and know that you're, you're getting some good deep depth of field and uh, most of the things you're focusing on will uh, will be in focus or most of the things you're looking at, they will be in focus or acceptable focus and they look pretty good. Um, things I don't quite like about this, when you're doing it, um, pressing the shutter button now will only snap. So if I take a shot over here now, it's uh, set to 1.5 meters. I'm pointing the camera at another old camera over there. I take a shot. And uh, if I play that back now and have a look at that image, it is not sharp at all because it was focusing well beyond that old Pentax camera there at 1.5 meters. So, uh, half press on the shutter button is now disabled you can't use that in this mode uh, but you can use the rear screen i need to be in shooting mode one quick stab there and now i've got my uh, rear screen up in touch mode and you can see i have selected autofocus uh, point focus and shoot that does work so if you're doing um uh, if you're doing a uh, snap distance priority shooting, you can still use the rear screen to focus and take a shot like I did then. And now when we look at this image of the Pentax, everything is nice and crispy and sharp. Okay, so that is snap focus distance shooting. And I think if you are new to street photography, and uh, a little bit shy about it perhaps um, then it is a pretty good way to shoot especially with the gr3 uh, because you're going to get quite a lot of light in the camera still 
and uh, you don't have to worry about um, uh, getting too close to your subject. With the GR3, set your snap distance priority or your depth of field priority, the DOF value. Set that to DOF3 and um, get your, uh, get your uh, snap distance value to 2 meters. And then you will see everything from about 1 meter all the way out to infinity will be in focus. Shutter speed is also going to be something you're going to have to uh, take notice of. This is at my minimum shutter speed right now, which is set to 1 30th of a second. If you're doing street photography and you want to stop motion, remember you will have to bump that shutter speed up and you can do that in the ISO menu. So if we go into the camera settings again and go to page two, go into your ISO settings like that. There's my minimum shutter speed and uh, I'm going to bump that all the way up to something that would be useful for street photography like one four hundredth of a second that should stop people as they're walking but you can see the camera is not obeying that because i've also reached the the uh the maximum value i have set for my automatic iso but remember we are in a studio environment here this is uh, not great light outdoors in good light snap distance priority will serve you well with both the gr3 and the gr3x uh, it is quite cumbersome having to go into the menu to activate this and switch it off again so in the next video we are going to cover one final subject um, for the rico gr 101 series and that will be saving all our custom settings to either user one two or three so we'll create some user settings, name them, save them, put them on this dial so we can recall them when we want to use them. Okay, so that will be the next and final video in the series. Apart from one more, one more after hours video where we will, uh, where I will go through some of the many questions that have popped up in the comments. And uh, I'll try to address some of those questions before we get into the next series which will be Rico GR 102, where we start to pull all of these ideas together and get out shooting and look at some more advanced features. We're going to be doing some uh, really cool stuff, uh, more infrared, uh, landscape photography, hyperfocal distance shooting, back button focusing, bracketing, all sorts of stuff. Okay, so I will see you uh, in the next one, which will be episode 15 and then an after hours and then we're done okay take care bye